right. So, hey, everyone, Tony Winston, Jazz Piano College. Got a request over on Patreon uh, to do a video about comping, which, of course, means accompanying. But you just know it's what piano players or guitar players do behind a solo. Uh, we're playing, uh, listening to the soloist and putting the chords in, hopefully at the right places at the right time and with the right feel. And um, so... I looked in my CD player, and, and in there was the Duke Ellington, uh, Jamie Abersall book, volume 12. And I said, well, this might be good. I'll just listen to the uh, piano player comping here and uh, get some ideas for this video. And I looked to see who was playing, and it's Ron Carter on bass and Kenny Barron on piano. And so I just took the first song, Satin Doll, and I I'm going to do a couple of different songs here. Um, and and this is going to be like an overview about comping. It's not going to be in great detail about anything. But the first thing I did was, is I just listened to it. And I would just listen for what he would do in two bars. And I would notate that rhythm down. And I, I put it on this piece of paper here. Some, some junk mail that came in. So it's got some other junk there. But uh, it's down in the description. I'm going to scan it so you can, you know, just print it out. And then everything I'm going to talk about is in this list over here. So, it, you know, it's kind of some things to keep in mind. Uh, so it's all there on the same page. You know, so these aren't in order or anything. These are just rhythms I heard randomly throughout. But I, I found that if I just followed this exactly and played these rhythms, it, it, it works fine for the song. You know, it's a nice little variety of rhythms. And... Uh, kind of shows you there's a certain random quality to doing this. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's talk about it. So the, the song is Satin Doll, and I'll do a few other songs too. And uh, just following the rhythms here, I'll put them up above my head. The first one is like... Uh, All right, pretty standard rhythm there. And a lot of times the uh, rhythms that you'll use kind of come from the song, from the melody of the song, or any you know special rhythmic things that might be going on, but you know if you think about the melody, da 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 da, you know that ba da there, so that would be a good uh, little rhythm thing to put in, da 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 da, like that. All right, so it's like one, two, three, and and just looking down the page here, I see several several places where. That's one of the rhythms, three and. Okay, so the first one I heard was just two quarter notes. Da, 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 I mean, uh, half notes. Da, 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 da. All right, and then we could try. Da, 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 da. All right, and you know, just I'm just gonna play all the rhythms here and just do the chords to the song. So I'll start with those two. I'll start on the second line. So ba da two three ba. So you get the idea. I'm just, you know, following these just to show you that a kind of a random approach will work. All right, so let's talk about all the various kinds of comping you can do. For one thing, if you're the piano player and there's a bass player and you're playing behind a soloist or a singer, um, you can do, you know, use two hands. And frequently you'll, you'll be putting rootless voicings in the left hand. So like on Satin Doll, we might start with this. And maybe add some notes up here. to E minor. So, you know, if you if you don't know rootless voicings for two five ones like this. Right, do it again. Then you want to study that. It'll really help your comping. Now another thing you can do, especially if you don't have a bass player, is play the uh, or you're playing solo, you play the, the, the uh, bass line put the chords in. Okay, and now the chords I was using 
very, very similar. It's just the inversions of the, what I was doing before. It's just up a little bit higher, you know, more in the range for the right hand. And, you know, I could go up, clear up to the inversion I was using here, too. voicings. So like I said, it's a good idea to, you know, get your rhythmic ideas from the song, uh, the melody of the song, or even maybe what the soloist is doing. Now when you're accompanying singers, and you know, you know they're going to sing particular notes of the melody, sometimes it's a good idea to give them their note. You know, especially if it's a less experienced singer, they they can rely sometimes on that to help them, help them stay on pitch or stay with the, with the rhythm. But a more experienced singer, you might want to like do kind of a harmony. So, you know, instead of putting the melody on top, maybe you come up here and go. All right. Or something even down below the melody. But if you're comping behind a soloist, you want to try to listen to the soloist and get some ideas. You know, you can, you can kind of lead the soloist or the soloist can lead you. If you hear the soloist starting to play like a little bit more outside, you know, with more altered dominance and maybe side slipping into another key, and uh, you're an experienced uh, musician, uh, not just a beginner, then I would recommend this book and I think there's two volumes of it. It's written by Hal Crook. You know, it's a very nice, uh, okay, 1992. And it's interesting because he shows you a lot of kind of like reharmonizations. We could all learn a lot from that book, actually. Uh, Hal Crook, he taught at Berklee College of Music, and according to Wikipedia, he's still out there teaching privately. So we've, we've looked at this random approach. But uh, another approach that you could take is a more consistent approach. Bud Powell or Wynton Kelly or somebody um, that typically puts, you know, the uh, chords on the and of two and the and of four. So like if you were soloing two, three, four. <laughs> It takes some practice to learn how to do that. And, you know, there's this, like, I guess they call it the Charleston rhythm, you know, where it's a da, da, like that. So one and two and. But you could do it kind of backwards, like one and two and. Same rhythm, but the first note's short and then the second one's long. So there's the consistent approach using, you know, those kind of rhythms. Or, or just mixing things up as much as possible. Now, uh, comping for your own solo. To me, I don't, I don't think about this that much. I kind of just go with the flow. I, probably if I studied it a little bit more and, and, and thought about it more, I'm sure I'd be better at it. To me, it's just more of a natural approach. But there are three things in my mind that you could do when you're soloing. You can do a constant thing like I was just doing. and. So, you know, just trying to accent on ands, and of two, and of four. What I tend to do more often is just accent certain parts of the line. ba ba doom bum ba dee ba doo bum ba ba doom bum Those are where my left hand will be, so... And then, filling in the holes, so... filling in the holes. 
Uh, that the three things? Four things. Playing a chord with every note of the melody, and Bill Evans does this more than anybody else, but it, it's still valid. I, I don't do it much, but uh, uh, let's go to the bridge. Good thing to do with big piano and octaves and stuff like that as well. And one thing that used to throw me off a lot uh, when I was listening to other people comp, and even when I tried to do it myself sometimes, I would get lost, is to do, I won't call them triplets, but they're like hemiola triplets, okay? That's my own term, but uh, you know, suppose you're doing like da 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 da, and you just want to like play on every every third eighth note, so. All right, I don't think I got lost, but you see I'm just going but you've got to do that, you know, in four, four times. So. So, you know, you got to keep, got to know where that one is and not get thrown off by the fact that you're not always on the beat. So. I think that was right, but you know, like I say, sometimes I throw myself off. Um, counter lines. So, you know, if you have a song that has one of these kind of progressions, you, know, right, you could sometimes just, let's see if we can find a place in the song to do it. So, I mean, it's possible, I suppose, you could do it there. So, you know, you could play for... Uh, for comping, you could do something like. Let's take the verse here. So I see, I could do a melody like this, maybe. You know, so I got a little kind of kind of melody moving there. And you know if it's if if it's mostly around on the thirds and the sevenths, then you don't need full chords because it'll it'll sound full anyway. You know. And just uh, melodic phrases, you know. Arpeggios, uh, you know, with harmony, but uh, oh, and hitting the fifth with a, something like that, you know, that's a that's you know another little thing you can throw in, because variety it's the spice of life. So the more you have, the better off you are. Block chords and drop two, uh, you know, I love to put stuff like this. Into my soul, into my comping. So on D minor, you know, if you're if you if you don't know about block voicings, you know, it's usually a, a scale with every other note being a diminished chord. So you know, if the chord symbol's D minor and you go like that, that sounds pretty good. It, you know, it's like a big band backing up the soloist. And then drop two is where you take the second from the note, the second from the top note, that would be this one, and drop it down to there, and usually get rid of the doubled note and go, and then, you know, it would be a, there's E minor, a diminished chord, and uh, this shit is hard as hell to learn, I gotta, I'll be honest with you, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time, you want to start with, with the, uh, closed version and then only when you know that pretty well you can you can transfer it into drop two if you like latin rhythms 
Once again, you can get your ideas from the song, uh, especially the melody of the song. In Latin music, there's usually something in the percussion section, you know, playing on every single eighth note. So it's not like you have to, um, you know, play a whole lot of stuff. Some typical things are, uh, you know, like two quarter notes, and then two offbeat quarter notes. So one and two and three and four and something like that. And then lots of off offbeats. Typical rhythm is that clave rhythm, which is like one, two, three, 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 and then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's one of them. There's a, tons of variations. And then there's the backwards one. One, two, one, two, 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 one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. And you know, that's giving you like that kind of thing we were doing in the jazz song, which is like every third eighth note, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, like that. So th those are the clave rhythms. But the thing is, is, you know, if I hear a clave actually doing that, I don't want to play right along with it usually. So I, I'll maybe hold down something longer, um, you know. Like I say, with all that rhythm going on, <laughs> sometimes you can get away with just holding down the chord, you know. All right. Now take a song like, uh, oh, I did one recently, Little Boat, you know, and I think it goes something like this. So it's got that da, 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 da. All right, so that's one thing you might think about putting in your rhythm. And then it's got this. See, that's like, a, that's like that triplet thing, not really a triplet, but every third, eighth note. One and two and three. And dun, dun, dun. I can't count it and do it at the same time, but one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I did it, hey. And actually, you know, just another little hint, professional hint, is I don't care how good you are, if you can, you know, take a challenging rhythm and play it and count it out loud while, and count it out loud while you're playing it. It helps on some level. I, I, I don't know, but all my piano students, as soon as they start counting out loud, they just start understanding things a heck of a lot better. And, you know, there's so many different Latin styles. I don't want to embarrass myself by how little I know about them. But really just listening to whatever song that it is you're playing and getting the feel of the song, the feel of the rhythm of the melody, and just kind of let that be your guide and when all else fails, write down some good rhythms in random order and just do them. And, you know, you'll, you can tell if it works or not. Okay, I guess the last thing I'll say is, is that uh, so many of these Jamie Abersold records have world-class musicians on them. So there's a volume where I think uh, the entire thing is, is written out what the uh, piano player plays. So, uh, you know, you could probably learn a lot about comping from that one. And like I say, there's really great musicians. Ke Kenny Barron's on this one. And uh, I know Jim McNeely does some. Kenny Barron. <laughs> he's like the guy, all right? Oh, Hal Galper. I know he's on some of them. And I really like his comping a lot. Dan Harrell, or I don't know how you say that last name. Dan, H-A-E-R-L-E. -E. He's good. Jamie Abersall does piano. And, you know, being an educator, uh, he's going to try to, you know, play stuff that is very, very standard that, you know, that everybody should know. So I, I would listen to him. And I see there's another person down here, too, um, Mark Levine or Levine. I think it's Levine. Um, and he's, he's another educator that is going to, you know, play things that are very typical and very stylistically correct. Um, and some of these other guys will probably take it out a little bit more. So you learn by listening, you learn by doing, playing along with other people. And, you know, when you can't play along with other people, playing along with recordings, play alongs or even just recordings, you know, just play along with the Miles Davis Quintet. You're not going to make Herbie sound any better than he already sounds, but, you know, there's another great accompanist right there is, is Herbie. If you want uh, all kinds of 
interesting ideas. He, he's your man. So you know the drill. Like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And uh, meet me over there on Patreon if you would like to support the channel in a greater way. And um, please leave a comment, too. Uh, I'd be happy to th hear some of your ideas about comping and, and, and get some ideas on who to listen to and, and who to emulate. All right, thanks, everyone.